did you find it really daunting when you were thinking about coming here and taking up this post? Just thinking about the aviation sector, just look at the news about the sector. You've got regulations, you've got costs, you've got companies that are struggling uh, to make ends meet, a major airline that's gone bust, a national carrier that's also struggling. Yeah. Um, what amid all of this, you know, made you think that uh, this was something still worth trying? It, it was never, honestly, it was never daunting. You know, what I had to get comfortable with was on the personal side. Right. That was more of a challenge because uh, wife was just about to have the third baby. Right. And a move when a baby is just uh, you know a few weeks old was probably what I was more concerned and about. And she was okay with it? The she, idea actually, of you know, India was always in our plans. India was always something we thought about in terms of coming back to. It's a big part of why, you know, there's, 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 there's this this is nationalistic side, you know. When you go to the US and you're doing things, and when I lived in China, India was always being talked about. And I took a lot of pride in that. So we always said if the right opportunity came by, we would consider coming back. I want my boys to grow up as Indians. I want them to feel the culture of where I grew up. And um, so it was always there. And um, it was never daunting. Actually, I, every day I used to come back with excitement. I said, wow, there are problems here, there are problems here. And I used to, you know, I was like a kid in a candy store saying, there's so many things for me to figure out. It was an intellectual you know, challenge for me. I wonder how long that's going to last. Ah, well. Well, you know, Tony said this many times. I'm yeah. going to lose my hair, I'm yeah. gonna, and I'm going to grow old really fast. And it's uh, look, I don't sleep much, okay. but I can tell you, every day I'm just ready to get up the next day, and I'm extremely stimulated. I'm extremely excited about what's going to, you know, kind of unfold for the next day. There's just so many things happening. So, what are some of the initial challenges that you faced in trying to set yeah. up over here? Well, you know, I actually the challenges you would you would probably assume are probably not the challenges I'm going to mention okay. now. The challenge has really been about building the team. You know, where you've started in terms of an organization from myself, employee one, to now having close to 300 people. Mm. And it's been organic. You know, we've not had to, you know, strategically, I haven't used a headhunter. I've not used a consultant. I was very keen that every person the few criteria I'm looking for. Okay. And uh, then it's building this team culture. So a lot yeah. of my organization right now are actually non-aviation folks. Okay. My flight ops team are thoroughbred aviation guys. Right. And you know, my ground handling guys are thorough aviation guys. My cabin crew are aviation mm -hmm. people. But the strategic, the commercial side, even our network planning, they aren't really aviation folks. And the reason for that is I want us to constantly keep challenging status quo. I don't ever want somebody to come to me and say, this is not going to work because it's never done. Actually, that's what we want to do. I want to go to those places that nobody goes to. I will make it work. And I have a very clear marker in my head of, mm. in terms of price points that I want to come out to. And until we hit those price points, I will not launch. So when you're talking about this price point and you sound pretty serious and you've always sounded very firm about it, um, what makes you so confident that you can manage it because mm -hmm. simply because the costs in the industries um, are fairly high and it is a struggle and we have we have this constant debate about whether even the existing low-cost carriers can really be called low-cost and we've had a low-cost carrier in the past that hasn't really managed to to uh, sustain itself just because of the burden of uh, high costs mm -hmm. uh, so w you know considering that a lot of the factors are the same here yeah. How do you feel you can manage that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to answer that with a statement first. Yeah. You know, and it's a statement that Tony said many times, and I firmly believe there are no true low-cost carriers in India. Mm. I truly, truly believe this. You look at the price points today. You know, today you have a low-cost carrier whose fare, yeah. you know, his price is actually higher than a national carrier today. If you do that, and it's it's a. Uh, so I, I truly believe there are no low-cost carriers here. What I am actually very, very confident about, and I think uh, this is, this is, I'm actually speaking with the confidence of having some early wins internally with the team, is we're challenging status quo. Hmm. We're challenging a lot of, there's no one big ticket item that we're going to suddenly wave off and it's going to be our magic that we're going to share. But I think it's a discipline across the board. Okay. We're aiming for incremental gains in little, little aspects. And I think that's where, I think when you pull that together as an aggregate, 
we're working off you know thinner margins mm. but my goal is really to deliver that fare that people would be excited about traveling is a strategy to sort of grow slow and steady or is it to kind of take the market by storm <laughs> what is the strategy it's to grow aggressively yes i don't i don't think in 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 aviation and actually in any business there's no slow steady i truly don't believe in it if you're fundamentally sure about a few things you pick and choose your elements that you want to invest in and you go full steam if you're you know second pedaling and double checking every single move you're not sure about your plans and this is one of the benefits we've had sitting here waiting for our licenses we've had the chance to revisit every plan there's a lot we have to still <laughs> wait and watch and uh, see how it pans out a lot to look forward to let's take another very quick break here on the date we're in conversation with mitu chandilia we'll be back in just a moment for the first week i was so late to school like 3 hours late and it's always because i'd come to the bus and if i see a, you know a woman or a child i'll say please after you after you and i'd end up missing that bus